It was a love story like no other, the story of America and her trucks. Buckle your seatbelts because we are going back in time. No relationship is without change. This 1986 Ford F-250 Super Cab came at a time of transition for both the country and the truck market. Like everything from the 80s, this truck has very square styling. However, I think it has aged better than many cars from the same era and still looks quite handsome. Because the owner still uses it, this truck is far from mint condition, but what Kelly Blue Book calls major cosmetic defects, we'll just refer to as character. On the inside, this XL model includes lovely touches like this fake rosewood trim, which helps break up a rather bleak expanse of vinyl and plastic. The controls are simple knobs and sliders, which you can use without ever taking your eyes off the road to look at an unresponsive or unintuitive touchscreen. Surprisingly, rather than a bench seat, there are two very roomy buckets and a cavernous center console. Passengers in the rear aren't as lucky. While this truck does have a back seat, it's a far cry from the luxurious interiors of modern pickups. This is the space you reserved for the one guy on the worksite that nobody liked, like me. A four-door crew cab was available, but uncommon, as this was before consumers demanded individual captain's chairs in every vehicle. If you're wondering what wheezy, old, throttle body injected engine is hiding under the hood, here is your answer. That glorious clatter belongs to the International Harvester 6.9 liter IDI diesel. By the early 80s, American automakers were toying with diesel engines, mostly to improve passenger car fuel efficiency. Only General Motors offered diesel pickup trucks. Seeing an opportunity but lacking a powertrain, Ford partnered with agricultural giant International Harvester to develop an engine. For years, commercial trucks had relied on hard-working diesel engines for the incredible amount of torque they generate. Ford took advantage of this, positioning their new engine as both an efficient and powerful choice. It debuted in the 1983 F-250 and F-350, making 170 horsepower and 315 pound-feet of torque, considerably more than its GM rivals. The IDI stands for indirect injection, meaning the fuel injects into a pre-chamber where combustion starts before spreading to the rest of the cylinder. Modern direct injection engines are more efficient but require more complex and expensive components. If you're looking for a turbocharger, don't bother. Ford didn't offer one until 1993. The engine's success led to the development of the legendary Power Stroke line. And soon, diesel would replace gasoline as the top-tier engine of choice in pickups. The high ground clearance and low gearing make it a great truck for the job site, but it lacks some of the finesse needed for on-road driving. If you've never driven an old truck like this, you might be a little intimidated, but really it's not that hard. The only scary parts are turning and accelerating and then slowing down. But, you know, if you're going in a straight line at a constant speed, yeah, no problem. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating, but I won't deny I'd rather drive it through mud puddles than through traffic. Perhaps the road manners of modern trucks have spoiled us all a little bit. Since 1981, the F-Series has been not just the best-selling truck, but the best-selling vehicle in America. This generation of F-Series saw the beginning of an interesting trend as Americans were lusting over a new type of truck. Pickups were becoming a status symbol, an outward sign of all the adventures you and your family could afford to go on. Nowadays, it's impossible to watch TV without seeing some commercial where a truck is pulling an obscenely large boat or camping trailer up a mountain. With each year come more elaborate accessories and options. Ford recently announced a feature to help drivers who can't back up trailers for the odd occasion where they actually tow something. Now, I'm not saying trucks need to be uncomfortable or hard to drive. I just wonder, based on the way they're advertised, how many owners actually use them to do work anymore. And I'm well aware that it shouldn't affect me at all what people choose to do with their personal vehicles, but I can't help feel sorry for the truck's sake. 
It's as if somewhere along the line, America fell out of love with a modest work truck, saying, it's not you, it's me. I just need a relationship with, with more seats, more doors, more cup holders, and more USB ports. Like most breakups, the hardest part is that Americans genuinely seem happier with their new love. But thankfully, this story does have a happy ending, because many Americans still need trucks to do actual work, and they don't need touch screens, moon roofs, and heated steering wheels. Not every pickup is doomed to sit in a suburban driveway with an empty bed. There are millions out there just like this F-250, and as long as there are jobs to do, there will be plenty of Americans out there who love work trucks. If you have a cool car you'd like to see in a video, shoot us an email. And don't forget to check out our blog and follow us on Facebook. I hope you have a wonderful life. Everything you wanted it to be. A white picket fence and a three-bedroom home with granite countertops so you never feel alone never feel alone never feel alone never feel alone does mm -hmm. oh. it hurts when things are wrong we can't talk cause we Just enough to show you myself Cause it hurts away